Alrighty, hi guys, this is Andy from wholesale-help.com and today I want to talk you through some of the first things you need to do after you subscribe to the niche research tool, TerraPeak. So if you followed my advice and you've taken a subscription to TerraPeak, this is what you see when you log in for the first time. There's a lot of things going on here and I suppose it's easy to get overwhelmed and to get a feeling that it's complicated and you don't know where to start. That's fair enough. So in this video, I want to help you get started to enable you to start playing with some of the tools to get to know it. So you're able to make full use of the product as soon as possible. So to start with, let's look at some of the housekeeping. As you can see here, you have the search bar. This is the main search bar for the site where you'll be putting all your product searches in and all your keywords along here is the date range. So you can start to search in the last 24 hours, in the last week, 14 days, in the last month, right the way up to 90 days. Or you can select a very specific time period as long as it's within 90 days. 90 days is the maximum. Next thing you have along here is which country you want to be searching in obviously you may have guessed from my accent i'm from the uk so i want to be searching ebay.co.uk i think it defaults to ebay.com so if you're not from the us you will need to make sure you change this because if you don't you'll be getting data from a completely different ebay now if you are in the uk and this is showing you ebay.com then we need to change that in our defaults so that you don't have to keep remembering to change it so to do that, we need to go over to my account, which is up here. So if you click on my account, you can see the account details with my name and my email address. And a bit further down, you'll see Terapeak for eBay preferences. And if it's defaulted to eBay.com, you can click the blue button here that says edit and you can put your own country site in here. And so every time you open TerraPeak in the future, it will default to whatever you select here. The same with the default search date. It's up to you. I prefer to put in 90 days just because the longer period of time you have, the better picture of what's going on in the niche, in my opinion. If you've only got the last 14 days or the last 30 days, for example, if there is a particular spike in that month for whatever reason, you might not get a bigger picture of what's going on. So you may want to change this from time to time, but as a default, I like to have it on the longest period of time possible to try and get as much of an accurate idea of what's going on. These things are all set to yes, and there's no reason to change them. Uh, the default currency again, I'm on pound sterling, and depending on where you're from, you can change that. And we're on good old Greenwich Mean Time here in the UK. We're not plus or minus anything because Mean Time was developed in Greenwich in the United Kingdom, folks. So proud. So very proud. <laughs> so then you go back up and click Save where you clicked Edit. That will update your preferences and it will remember that for next time you log in. So if we now go back to TerraPeak for eBay, it will take us back to the dashboard. So let's look at some other things. If you've just started off, there's a, a tutorial tab here. And if you click on it, it will take you through some of the basics. And it's well worth just taking the time to read through some of these to give you a bit of an orientation of the site. Now, if you have a look on the left, we've got another drop down that says product. If you click on it, you can change it to com competitor or category. Uh, if you change it to competitor, you can search for specific users on eBay and find out exactly how they're doing. You can spy on them, find out what their best selling items are, even what color items they're selling most of, maybe what size items are doing best, and you can find out all their best uh, sales data so you can then apply that to your business, which is pretty cool, huh? It's pretty straightforward. So all you need to do is put in your keyword in the search box, hit go, and it will tell you all the relevant data. So let's give this a quick go. Don't ask me why I just typed yo-yo. It's the first word that came to my head. Where did that come from? I used to like yo-yos. 58%. I had a Coca-Cola yo-yo. Did you ever have a Coca-Cola yo-yo? Did you ever go to school in the 90s? Oh, cool. 
Anyway, 100%. So this is a very broad search term. So the broader you are, the less specific the data will come out. So in general, 29.22% of all yo-yos sell. <laughs> this is your sell-through rate, basically. As in, compared to the number of items that listed, this is the percentage that have sold. Obviously, if we were to change and be more specific and say, Coca-Cola yo-yo, then we're actually searching for a very specific yo-yo. And I would imagine that the sell-through rate will change, the average price will change. In fact, everything should change. It's a good tip to try and be as specific as you can, and that way the information you'll get will be as accurate as you can. So 43.75% sell-through rate, the average price has jumped from 4 to £15.25. The start price is £7.77. And then some general stats like the total number of sales or the total value of sales in this case, the total number of listings here, successful listings, total bids, items offered, items sold. You get the idea. Bids per listing, sell through rate, sellers per day. So the idea is to get more familiar with this is to do as many searches as you can. So start putting in some keywords, start seeing what results you can get and make a note of the better sell through rate percentages for and the average prices and each time you get a better one you can make a note of the the ones that are getting higher and higher ultimately you want this above 50% ideally and the nearer you can get it to 100% the better obviously that is then offset by the number of items sold because if for example there were only two items listed and two items sold you would have 100% sell through but there's only two items, so it's probably not that popular. So you do have to offset that percentage with the total listings to build up a better picture of what's going on. So that's it for now. We've had a quick look around. There's many more tabs here. It would turn into a very long video if we looked at them all. They all do different things. You can play with them. They're fairly self-explanatory, but I may do a video on each different tab in the future. But this should get you going. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, as always, hit me up in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. I would appreciate that. Okay, that's it from me. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you on the very next video. Bye for now.